today. On. Zero to awesome. There's a lot of truck parts, and they're all really heavy. So this, which I haven't even unboxed yet, is a swarf, <laughs> is a swarf works hidden winch mount. And so what it does is it hides the winch up here in the bumper and it comes out right here. And that way you don't need some crazy aftermarket bumper because I really don't like the way any of those will look. We've got the winch mount that goes into place of the intercooler. So in order to put all that together, you need a new intercooler. So this is a Cobb intercooler. And because we have a Cobb intercooler, why not get the Cobb access port? So whenever we're done installing our stuff, we can tune it. And then, because the winch weighs so much, the, uh, the winch mount itself weighs apparently 78 pounds. The winch, God, I'm gonna guess weighs somewhere close to the same. So that's gonna make the front of our truck come down a little bit. And it already has kind of a rake to it, which I was thinking about getting rid of anyway. So we also have a leveling kit to hopefully raise our front end back up a little bit. And then while we're up there, we have some lights and those lights are gonna go right here in these holes. I'm not sure we're gonna get to all this today, but because we have to take the bumper off to get to where the winch goes, and we have to take, I think, everything off the front to get to the intercooler, we're gonna do all that at once and then we'll get to the other stuff. So both Swarfworks and Cobb have great instructions on how to put their winch mount and their intercooler in, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail about that. We'll talk about a few things as we go through, but. I thought part of their instructions for the Swarfworks winch mount were interesting. If you're going to skip this installation manual like a real man would do, please at least see blah, blah, blah. So I don't know these guys, but I feel like we could be friends. I mean, if you put aside the fact that women may buy the winch mount, but that's a different video. So we're gonna get started by taking all of the face of the Raptor apart. We're gonna put our intercooler in, then we're gonna put our winch mount in and the winch, hopefully get all that wired up and put back together so I can drive this thing tomorrow. I hope this doesn't take too long. So Cobb's website says this is a three wrench difficulty job to replace your intercooler. So let's just pick one, two, three wrenches, and now we can get to work. So the Raptor is all apart now. Grill's gone, the inner cooler is gone, the bumper's gone, and now we have room for activities. And all of our stuff is over here. We got a whole garage full of Raptor. And so for comparison purposes, on the right here is the old Ford stock inner cooler. On the left is the new Cobb aftermarket in cooler. So this is gonna allow us to do two things. Number one, it's gonna make room for our winch because it's gonna sit up higher, not where that one was sitting before. And number two, it's gonna give us colder air for our engine. Just in case anyone doesn't know how or what an intercooler does, it cools down the air that the turbos push into the engine. And so colder air is packed more densely. That means you can get more air in your cylinder. You can add more fuel, you can get a bigger bang and you can go faster. So now we need to take our new intercooler, put it over there in that giant hole.
Okay, so the intercooler is all in here now. It is all plumbed up, and the next step in the instructions is to start putting the grill and everything back on, but we're not gonna do that just yet. I think it'll be easier to get to everything that we need to for the winch with everything off. So, we do now have this big open spot here. We had this shutter thing here before, the intercooler behind it, and if you don't know, these shutters, what they do is they have a motor attached to them, and if the car doesn't need much air to cool itself, they start closing, and they basically turn your truck into a Prius. It's amazing, but we don't want our truck to be a Prius, so we're not gonna put that back on. Instead, we're gonna open this box over here and start putting it in a big old winch. Y'all wanna hear an interesting tidbit I learned while taking the truck apart? So this little nub thing right here, I always thought was for the adaptive cruise control that I don't have, but it turns out, if you look underneath it here, there's a little hole. And this, well now I covered it up, but there's a hose over here that goes to it, and it's a washer spout. Whenever you turn on your windshield washers for the windshield, it sprays this camera too, which is, Slightly ridiculous, but it's a thing apparently. So while we're wiring up our winch, let's talk about how hard this nut is to get off. And let's also talk about why I chose the Warren Xeon winch. Now, Warren winches are notoriously expensive and a lot of people say not for good reason. And I tend to agree with that because we have a Smitty built X20, X20, however you say it, winch on the forerunner over there, and it's been great for like four or five years. However, there is one important feature that the Warren winch has, and that is a free spool that you can activate via the remote. Warren is the only winch manufacturer that does that. And so with this specific installation, it's really important to be able to have that free spool on the remote because the winch is underneath the skid plate and there is no way you're getting down there to flip a switch to free spool your winch out. So that's why we went with the Warren. There you have a winch hidden under the Raptor. Just put the skid plate back on and I think we're good to go. Oh, hey there. We ran out of time the other night. We got the Raptor all buttoned up, skid plate, everything back on, but we didn't get a chance to grab the access port and do our tune. But that's okay because it gave us time to order more parts. So this is the Cobb intake system for the Raptor. It's got a bigger air box, there's a filter somewhere in there, and some bigger piping that goes all along with this. And the reason we did that is because we have the access port to tune, and that's kind of Cobb stage one. Then if you get the Cobb intake system, that's stage one plus, and then if you get the intercooler, which we've already done, that's stage two. So there was no reason to you know put in this big intercooler have the capability to tune and then not be able to get the air into the engine that it needs to have even more power so went ahead got the intake so next step is we're going to install that then we're going to do our tune and then we're going to go drive this thing
So that was extremely easy. I would say anyone who can handle a screwdriver can install this intake, probably a half hour or less start to finish, uh, which reminds me. So the other day installing the winch and the intercooler, nine hours start to finish. I did eat lunch in there somewhere, so maybe eight and a half hours, but for your amateur mechanic, you can get it done in a day. Now we've got our intercooler, we've got our intake. It's time to tune. So this is the Cobb access port. This is what lets you tune the computer in your car. And I have already hooked it up to my laptop and updated this firmware, so we are ready to go. And so to tune, all you have to do is plug it into your OBD2 port. Turn on accessory power. Yes, we have a Raptor that we are looking for. Stage two, 93 octane. We're gonna have to put premium in this thing, but that's the price of progress, right? Things started happening. It said service advanced track and all this other stuff, but we're backing up. That way, in case things go wrong, we can put everything back to the way it was. So that's it, the truck is tuned. And so this is Cobb's off the shelf map. You can go to a shop and have them do a more custom tune and maybe I'll do that later. But for now, I think we need to go out and see how this thing performs. Well, actually, maybe I should wait for a day where it's not raining, but don't worry, because for you, that's right now. say that we accomplished our goal. The Raptor is significantly faster now. You no longer have to put it into sport mode to get some get up and go. You can just touch the gas and you're off. It's actually, I'm driving it the other day in the rain, it's almost a problem. So is the Cobb Stage 2 kit worth it? I'm gonna go ahead and go with yes. It's not like driving this thing before was boring at all, but now it's absolutely amazing. It's a blast to drive. So I think that's it for today. We'll install the rest of the parts that we have next time. We still have the lights, we have the lift kit, because we did lose a little bit of height in the front end from the weight of the winch. And also, I think I'll discuss my plans for my DIY toolbox that's not gonna be a toolbox because I don't wanna lose any room in my bed and it's, it'll be interesting. But until next time, oh God, I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble. Lost my wrench. Happens at least every three minutes. It's a chocolate chip cookie with an Oreo inside. This is what Aaron's been doing while I've been working on that. <laughs>